Well, Barry, you always come up here armed with that Cockney charm and the big smile and a couple of big announcements. £500,000 next year for the world champion. That That is serious money. Well, it's, it deserves to be. It's our Blue Ribbon event. You know, the, the game's got bigger and bigger over the last eight years, so it's a natural progression. £2.25 million. Perhaps more importantly, almost, is £10,000 if you, just to win one game. So the kids that are struggling at the bottom end trying to make a name for themselves... Yeah, you know, they can they can come to the party. It's a land of opportunity snooker at the moment, and we're we're making announcements all over the place about how many more opportunities there are. But it's it's built on the solid foundation of being a very good business. And it's a great advert for the sport when you look that if you if you become the world champion, if you take that ultimate title, half a million pounds shows that snooker is a serious sport moving in the right direction. Well, it's moving in the right direction. I mean, we're not there yet. You know, if we were climbing a mountain, we've just gone. We're leaving base camp. There's a load of there's miles and miles to go you know we've we've aimed far too low over years for years and years much too low you know the tennis golf have gone past us and yet our viewing figures are better and we're to, we're shown by a wider audience so why it's all about perception you know i mean the small things even about a football shirt in the front row it's about perception you know we're a quality game played by quality people in front of quality fans so please don't rock the boat. Let's do our job. Let's tell everybody in the world, snooker is the place to be. You know, ITV have come on and said, we, they're appreciating it. They're hitting numbers they've never hit before on ITV4. Never hit before. So what do they do? They say, well, okay, we want to be more. We want to be taken more seriously. We've got the World Grand Prix. We've got the players. We want the tour championships. So it goes 32 players, 16, 8. So if you're really, and that's a level playing field, if you're good enough, you can change your life through snooker. And that's the message that we've got to keep going on about. We are seeing these kids coming in from China. They are going to be serious players. You better be ready. We've got 40 year olds winning tournaments. You know, a lot of tournaments run by people in their 40s. It's great for old people like me. But there are youngsters out there that are going to take the game to the next level and we've got to show them the rewards that they get if they get there. Why should they dedicate their life why should they give us this unbelievable entertainment unless we're paying them properly? So I'm very happy with the way we're going. It's expanding on every front. No complacency, total focus, huge work ethic. No prisoners will be taken. I just wanted to pick up on what you were saying about £10,000 for winning one match in the qualifiers for the Worlds. That's actually really important, isn't it? Because you're recognising that for the youngsters coming through but those who haven't yet broken into the top 64, 10 grand is a very important amount of money because it gets them going for the following season, for the flights, for the hotels and a little bit of coaching. That, that is quite a significant development, although it's dwarfed in headlines by the 500 grand for the winner. The headlines, what the public press, put, you know, the popular press will pick up, you know, half a million pound the winner two and a quarter million pound prize money actually all the other prize money increases which there are many next season are all going to be for second and third round losers because we acknowledge that we can't ask these people to dedicate their lives if it's all risk and no reward we've got to let them eat i don't want to make it easy for them because it's not easy to get to the top in anything whatever you do it's tough and you've got to make sacrifices and you've got to be better than most but I don't, want to, I don't want to freeze them out. I want the land of opportunity. I want a career. I don't want barriers to entry. So I think taking the prize money deeper is going to be very productive in terms of encouraging new talent. And then, of course, once they've got their foot on that merry-go-round, you've got to jump on with your whole body. You can't ride a merry-go-round with one foot on the floor. Average shot clock, average shot time. Now, just explain this because it, it's not... At the moment, it looks like it's going to be a little name and shame, but without a specific punishment. It's a three-monthly check to see whether a little public shaming gets them a bit faster around the table. We've, we've been looking at average shot times this year, and there are a few players in there that are, are flagging behind, to be honest with you. Now, whether that's because they're naturally slow thinkers or whether they are involved in gamesmanship, perhaps slowing a game down I don't know and, and I don't really want I don't want a problem with this at all so we thought the easiest way rather than come in with some heavy handed you know fines discipline whatever we're going to give them a year and we're going to say to them look 30 seconds average shot time really that's that's not terrifically quick you know but anything over that it starts to get a bit dull and you're getting a bit boring and I've got no place for you in an entertaining sport if you're boring 
I understand there'll be certain frames, but the average shot time over a tournament, over a long match, really should show you who's there to entertain and who's there to drive us all to watch him paint dry. So we're going to give him a year. Every three months we're going to publish anyone who's over 30 seconds will be up on the website and with a message. Come on, boys, get your act together. And if after 12 months no one's listening, then we're going to have to bring some rules in. You know, it's going to be a warning, a yellow card, second offence, a financial penalty, third offence. I can't let them just drift off. There's not many of them. Some of them just got it used to being slow. It's OK. Well, we'll get unused to it. And just finally, it's been a really intriguing championship so far. So many world champions out. There's some brilliant stories here. Who have you got your eye on? Ding, the first win. That would be amazing. John Higgins could tie Ronnie on five. Williams is turning it on again. Mark Allen, Kyron Wilson, two brilliant Masters finalists from, from January. Who, who, who do you think it's leaning towards if, if you can pick somebody? I can't pick anybody. I mean, I wouldn't if I could. But at the end of the day... You know, Ding's been knocking on the door and deserves it for what he's done for us in China. It's a way of saying, well done, you know. I know what it would mean to him. John Higgins is like, you know, scraping paint off the wall. He's the toughest match player out there. Kyron Wilson is desperate, you know, new young family, wants to make himself a superstar. Mark Allen, how much did he enjoy the Masters? He enjoyed it so much he wore a football shirt for the interview. You know, let's, let's hope he doesn't wear one this year. There wasn't a fine for that, by the way. No, no, no. There would be this year if you wore it for the World Championships. Uh, no, no, I, I just think it's, like, we know it's wide open. Five former champions went out in the first round. You know, this is a tournament. I mean, God bless our sponsors, Betfred, but this is a tournament to be a bookmaker, isn't it? You can't lose money, can you? How could you lose money in this? There's so many shocks. Who knows? Just wish them all luck. As long as they entertain everybody, I've got no problems who it is. Thanks, Barry. Cheers. Betfred. Proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.